Andrew Neil is joined by Vince Cable for Sunday Politics in an hour. First, BBC One poses the big questions. Good morning, thank you very much. Welcome to the Big Questions live from St Albans, uh, Samuel Ryder Academy. I'm Nicky Campbell. Uh, ten days ago, protesters from the campaign group No Dash for Gas pleaded guilty to aggravated trespass for their occupation of a power plant last year. And now, EDF, the plant's owner, is suing them for £5 million in damages. Our first big question, should protesters be sued? Ben Stewart from Greenpeace says allowing civil suits will fundamentally undermine the right to protest in this country. Lawyer Barbara Hewson says there are plenty of peaceful ways to protest which don't cause damage or create extra costs. St Albans is where Britain's first Christian martyr was beheaded by the occupying Romans for refusing to give up Christianity. Our next big question, should you be willing to die for your faith? Islamic fundamentalist Anjem Chowdhury says Muslims must be prepared to sacrifice everything, including their lives, for their faith. Imam Ajmal Masrur says God wants you to live a good life. So if you were held at gunpoint, it would be acceptable to deny your faith. It's been a week of politics, parliamentary and sexual. Our last big question, are unwanted advances just a part of life? Psychologist Glenn Wilson says men often misinterpret simple pleasantness as a sexual overture. Uh, the director of End Violence Against Women says there's a clear difference between flirting and sexual harassment and men know perfectly well when they've crossed the line. Welcome everybody to The Big Questions. <laughs> Vicky Beeching, would Jesus have been a climate change <laughs> protester? Would Jesus question. have been up that chimney? Uh, I think often um, in the Christian tradition we have a bit of a strange view of Jesus because um, if you read in the Sermon on the Mount, he talks about blessed are the peacemakers and uh, lots and lots of talk about kind of peace and turning the other cheek. But uh, one of the things that strikes me in the Gospels is that um, story about Jesus going into the temple and seeing that they'd actually turned it into a marketplace. Basically, they were charging interest that was too high and they were uh, selling people um, animals that were too expensive. But they had to buy them to sacrifice in the temple. So Jesus walks in and we might expect him to just say, oh, peace, you know, chill, everybody. Mm. And actually, he, he grabbed a whip and he began turning over all the tables. There's animals everywhere, money crashing to the floor. And he shouts, you know, you've turned my house of prayer into a den of thieves. And that actual radical revolutionary Jesus, who was radical and revolutionary enough to get arrested and killed... It was righteous anger. You know, quite right. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. It was righteous anger. <laughs> Uh, now, if, if you'd uh, like to add to that debate, log on to bbc.co.uk, the big questions. Follow the link to where you can join in online. You can follow the discussion on Twitter as well. We're also debating live this morning from St Albans, should you be willing to die for your faith? And are unwanted advances just a part of life? So tell us what you think about those topics or send us your ideas for future debates or any general comments you'd, might, uh, you'd like to make about the programme. Uh, sorry to... In right. interrupt where the gentleman was quoting a verse of the Quran where God says and those who have uh, died in the cause of God don't say they're dead in fact they're receiving sustenance in fact that is about the person who has died in the process of a in a holy or a, a virtuous way which is jihad, to do hold on uh, one second to be able to uphold justice and, and truth etc but it does not encourage you to kill yourself that's the difference if you die in the process then we should glorify you but not glorify and glamorize the death itself and that's the difference yeah. Vicky. What about the people who oh, hang on with well, Alison I'll, 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 you can come in Sorry. right after Vicky it's quite all right <laughs> <laughs> I think Vicky. my perspective on it from the Christian tradition is that we look at martyrdom often as something distant and future and actually if you look at the process of coming to faith in Christ it's actually supposed to be a death there and then so um, actually dying for your faith is supposed to be the starting point of Christianity Jesus says take up your cross you know that's become quite poetic now but actually you know take up your guillotine pick up your electric chair I mean that's not a particularly great welcome is it but actually mm. that is the message of Christianity so um, in terms of our faith I think we should actually be surrendering to that sense of dying from the very outset and I totally agree with you sir that um, there is a, there's a risk of, of glamorizing mm. this death when actually it's a mundane everyday reality yeah. 
Well, in the 1930s, uh, mothers of debutantes used to draw up lists of suitable and unsuitable men, NSIT, not safe in taxis, or MTF, must touch flesh next to a name. It meant no invitation for him. Well, in the 60s, girls used to whisper WHS for wandering hand syndrome when they spotted notorious men advancing, apparently. Now, it all seems rather coy and outdated nowadays, uh, but we call it nowadays what it is, sexual harassment. Are unwanted advances just a part of life? Liz Fraser, are they just a part of life? Yeah, and I think we as a society need to be sending the message this is not just a part of life, and of course it doesn't just affect adults. <laughs> Of course I agree with what you're saying and if you want me to go on the record and say I think it's fine to men, for men to grope women, you're not going to get that out of me today because of course I don't, I'm not a moron. But we do have to be very <laughs> careful that with, with all things where the, there, are, there are grades of things, you know, there are always grades of things, there's black and white and loads of grey in between. What we have to be very careful is, is that the people who do need to be heard, the people who are really really coming under a lot of pressure from people which makes them very uncomfortable, frightened, intimidated, they, they have breakdowns, all kinds of things. We need to hear that. And if there's a huge amount of background noise mm. of every time someone's in a lift and someone goes, well, you, know, you look a bit nice, love, if every time that comes to a complaint procedure, we can't hear the times when it really is necessary and I do worry about that. Okay. I think it, as a woman it disturbs me to hear you say that as a woman. I, I'm you know, sure with it all does, due respect. Yeah. And I think we actually represent such a, a different culture here in the Western world. If you actually think about what women go through in, in many other cultures, they're so far behind us in terms of progress. It's all very well for us. To me, it kind of sounds like a bit of a first world response to go, you know what, it's background noise, just get over it, love. Actually, we need to be women standing strong on this. I think it was interesting with the, um, the T-shirts sold on Amazon, if you yeah. guys are aware of that. Um, the computer generated yeah. T-shirts, you know, keep calm and different kind of violent mm. uh, yeah. acts against women. Um, I actually mm. saw one the other day in a women's shop that said, keep calm and obey Mr. Grey. So a, a hat tip, you know, to the Fifty Shades. So women now are actually uh, kind of condoning violence against women, making it seem humorous. So I think as girls, we have to stick together. We have to have one voice and say, it's not background noise. Every murmur, every person counts. Glenn, Glenn Wilson, author of, of the, uh, the Science of Love. Science? Anyway. <laughs> This is yes. interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about the chemicals that are going on, the, 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 the chemical uh, undertow to it all. Yeah. But you know, why do some men do it uh, and make these advances when it is clearly not on? Well, they sometimes misread the, the signals because uh, women, as a kind of evolutionary strategy, admit a wide variety of ambiguous flirtatious signals for various purposes, <laughs> not all of them sexual, but there is something about the male brain which tends to read them as being specifically sexual. And that's when he... <laughs> Alison's agreeing straight. with you. I think that's right. But, but anyway, carry on, there's more. <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, that's the, the fact of the matter. Um, the, the abuse of power, of course, uh, that, that is a, a real issue. And of the course one it is, we, but what's going on chemically? What's going with. on, uh, you know, this, this chemical undercurrent? Well, uh, there are complex sex wars going on. Uh, men admit a, emit a pheromone called androstenone, um, which uh, has the capacity to deter other males and females, for the most part, except when they're ovulating, then they find it attractive. And in retaliation, uh, women emit copulins which have the capacity to blind males to the differences between the attractive and unattractive ones. <laughs> so that they're less able to reject an unattractive woman. You are less able to reject an unattractive woman. I'm try I was just trying to get my head around the concept of us emitting a chemical which makes yeah. you less able to reject an unattractive woman. I, yes, I, I give this as an example of the fact that there is a pheromone war going on uh, below um, consciousness. But we also have a frontal lobe which we've developed over the last few years. <laughs> Of course, as human beings, we all have what we don't Moments. do. What we don't do is extend our own feelings to action. When you do that, that becomes wrong or that could be right. I would like to say very simply, if we educate our children from the day they're born that opposite sex are to be treated with dignity and honor and respect, mm -hmm. they're equal like you are, mm -hmm. treat them like you would like to be treated, 
Mm. Don't advance on anybody without their consent. Mm. I think our so society would be much better. It's Where we're going really wrong... We talked it's about difficult, what we though, because if you're saying about yeah. education and then you actually back it up from more chemical kind of um, theses, a lot mm. of people would say, well, actually, you know, I need pornography because, it, you know, I have these desires and I have to do something about them. The chemical argument and uh, also well, what well, you said... Well, you know, well, wait a second, Alison, has it away. ever happened to you in the... You know, <laughs> has it happened to you? Yes, I got pinched on the backside in the lift one time. Not this morning. So. No. Thank <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, very much indeed. Debates continue on to London Derry next week. Have a great Sunday from everyone here in St Albans. Thanks for watching.